Jason Williams Cincinnati Inquirer published 11.25 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time August 22, 2019 Let's put the 2020 election in, well, 2020 for a moment. Believe it or not, there is an election this November. There aren't many headline-grabbing races on the ballot in Ohio, but that doesn't mean the hyper-local elections aren't important. Here are three intriguing storylines in the battle for four open seats on the Cincinnati Public Schools Board of Education. 1. Democrats back candidate who's not on the ballot Avondale Democrat O.Z. Davis III was appointed to the school board last year, and he probably would have been a shoe-in to be elected this fall after receiving the local Democratic Party endorsement. Davis failed to complete the most basic task of any political campaign, gathering enough ballot signatures to qualify for the ballot. He fell way short of obtaining the necessary 300 ballot signatures, and the Board of Elections on Monday officially determined that Davis would not be on the ballot. It left five candidates, all Democrats, on the ballot in a field race where the top three finishers win a seat on a board that oversees Ohio's third-largest school district. Nonetheless, Davis has decided to run as a write-in candidate. It's nearly impossible to win as a write-in candidate, and I'm not sure how someone who couldn't complete the relatively simple task of collecting enough ballot signatures is going to buck the write-in odds. Davis's odds, however, might have improved some when party leaders on Wednesday made the head-scratching to decision to continue to endorse him rather than support someone else. The endorsement is critical, especially in a nonpartisan race such as this. It allows a candidate to be on the party's sample ballot. The ongoing support of Davis has caused a rift in an already divided party, as many Democrats believe it's not fair since Hyde Park's Ben Lindy had previously sought, and narrowly lost, the endorsement. More on Lindy below, incumbents Carolyn Jones and Eve Bolton are the other endorsed Democrats in the field race. The party also has endorsed Pam Bowers in a special election. 2. Ben Lindy vs. Teachers Union Lindy raised nearly $70,000 in his first month on the campaign, by far more than any other candidate. He's expected to be supported by the Cincinnati Business Committee, and his pathway to victory got easier with Davis's inability to qualify for the ballot. It could have gotten even easier had the Democrats decided to rethink the Davis endorsement and instead given it to the Hyde Park resident. Lindy seemed next in line for the endorsement, since his bid for it fell short by one vote in July. But the teachers' union, and the Democratic Party's genuflecting to the union, kept Lindy from gaining the advantage of the party's seal of approval. Lindy runs Greater Cincinnati's Teach for America, a national program that places education and non-education professionals in low-income school districts to teach for at least two years. Teachers' unions view TFA as a union-busting organization, despite it being backed by former President Barack Obama and run by a bunch of do-gooder liberals. Plus, many of TFA's teachers join local unions. Further, the teachers' union has held a grudge against Lindy since he first surfaced on the political scene in 2016 as a statehouse candidate. During that race, it was discovered that Lindy had written a research paper about collective bargaining years earlier at Yale Law School. Some viewed it as anti-union. Given Lindy's fundraising chops and the union's desire to keep him from winning, this could turn out to be an expensive race. 3. Copcath controversy motivates candidate North Avondale Republican Steve Megerly said a big factor in his decision to run for school board was local politicians' social media response to the Covington Catholic High School maelstrom. Megerly, a Copcath graduate, was particularly upset with Cincinnati School Board member Mike Morosky, a Democrat who's not up for re-election this year. Mike Morosky called them a bunch of spoiled privileged kids, Megerly said, it's inappropriate for a member of the Board of Education to bully and attack high school students who are simply standing up for their religious beliefs. To be clear, Copcap isn't part of Cincinnati Public Schools, and Morosky's criticism actually was more focused on the students' parents and Covington Diocese. Megerly, 39, is giving politics another try a decade after his first go-around ended unceremoniously. 
In 2009, he resigned from Covington City Commission after admitting to breaking campaign finance law by helping to pay for an anonymous flyer attacking another commission candidate. He has remained active in politics, having hosted fundraisers for several GOP candidates, including Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin. Megerly spent nine months last year as Cincinnati City Councilman Jeff Pastor's top aide. Megerly faces an uphill battle in a three-person race against an endorsed Democrat, Bowers, and likely endorsed Republican, Gary Favors. Bowers, director of school-based services at the Central Clinic Behavioral Health, was appointed to the seat after Erica Copeland Dansby resigned from the board this year. Favors has a nice resume for a school board race. He's a longtime CPS teacher and an Army veteran, and he'll likely be backed by the business community. Subscribe and listen to Jason's free That's So Cincinnati podcast on Apple Podcasts and most other pod platforms. Email jwilliams at inquirer.com. Let's block ads. Why?